Hi everyone, it's Ren here. Welcome to my French room, guys. I'm here for the week, flying back to Ireland uh, Sunday. So uh, happy to welcome you. I um, brought Humphrey back because, uh, you know, I thought that it had been a while since I'd seen him. Um, I'm going to take, well, I'm going to have another hot take today on the basis of uh, suggestions by my Patreon supporters. So also a reminder for you that uh, if you want me to cover any topic, these days, most of what I discuss is suggested by my Patreon supporters because they just come up with a lot of great topics and it's just fantastic and I kind of react to them partly in real time and hopefully something good comes out of it. So check out my Patreon page uh, that you can link, you know, there's a link to it in the description box so you can start joining me from three euros. So it's, it's a new, you get to interact with me and our growing community directly. There's also two books that you can get, my book on the energy, The Ecstatic Soul, 82 reviews uh, on uh, Amazon, links below. You can check whether that might be something for you, as well as my newer novel, The Infinite Castle. Just thank you for supporting my work. Okay, so INFJs in the workplace. That is a topic that, you know, if my community is to be believed, that's a topic that is of uh, great interest. And I mean, we should not be surprised by this, given that, well, you know, uh, I imagine that my audience is made up mostly of young people and older people. Uh, nothing very original so far, but young people are people who are going to sooner or later enter the professional world. And you also have people who are already in the professional world who, um, for any number of reasons, find it difficult to get by. Because, you know, the, the professional world is a world that comes with its own rules. It's not the world of family. It's not the world of school. It's not the world of university uh, where uh, people of the INFT type could do very well. Um, you know, the world of the professional, also it's increasing modern orientation about techniques of management, relationship to superiors, uh, expectation of results. All these different aspects, I think, um, are likely to present a challenge for INFJs. And so I want to discuss that a little bit and maybe from my perspective and theoretical viewpoints suggests uh, ways to approach this, you know, so so uh, so let's uh, let's look at it. And, you know, this is also informed by direct experience, because however, mo however much I would be able, to, I would like to be able to live from my um, from my writing and my video content. Um, it helps massively that I'm supported by a very generous community, but you know I also need to have a nine to five in order to to get by. And Europe is not getting any less expensive, so that's uh, that's an, an additional consideration. So certainly, you know, if I were to take my experience as a starting point, um, in school I always did quite well, and in university I did even better. Um, I was always high performing, satisfied, uh, flourishing in a context that I just thought was really suited to me. And and perhaps naively, I thought, oh, you know, maybe in the professional world when I need to take a job, like I don't, I have a vague premonition that this is not going to be exactly the same system. But uh, by and large, okay, university is telling me that I'm smart enough, that I'm capable enough, so I should be fine. And the transition to the professional world was actually quite, quite difficult because I, uh, you know, I've been working for organizations, so essentially working in a nine to five desk job uh, with, again, managers, targets, um, job descriptions that get longer and longer, it seems, over the years. Uh, lots of technical language, technica technical expectations, a lot of emails, I mean, you know, meetings and uh, uh, performance reviews and career, you know, performance plans and uh, career progressions and all these. So what, what, what does these, why all do all these aspects seem to not be completely uh, consonant with, uh, you know, an INFJ sort of makeup, you know? Well, um, first of all, because it demands a certain level of extroversion, uh, career progression, you need to be extroverted, you need to get to meet people, you need to show yourself, you need to show that you're um, not only you're doing good work, if you are, but you're also able to promote the work. Because 
it would be quite common with INFJs, and it's been my case in the past, still nowadays uh, the case, and I'm sure that uh, some some among you viewers will um, understand what I'm saying when I speak of invisible work. You know that that we we can often do very good work, but whether it will be noticed and acknowledged and uh, rewarded by management is a different issue. It's kind of unfair because we work best uh, when we're sort of doing our thing. And yes, I hope so. If we're a little bit lucky, at least the area of the work that we are in is an interesting one. I do think that a lot of INFJs and as an I leads would thrive best in things where they are not submitted to or subjected to strong time temporal requirements, you know, where you have to move from topic to topic, from project to project very quickly, sometimes six or seven across the day, um, that they would thrive best in an academic setting where they can engage in research over a certain period of time, or as, as writers, if that was a lucrative position, which it is not really, uh, where they could spend, you know, a long time on a book and, and perfecting the book. Um, I think that as teachers, INFJs would also probably be quite satisfied because they'd be able to color their teaching and FE oriented teaching, let's say, which, you know, is a way of connecting to, to, to their classrooms or to their, to their conference halls with a, an MI coloring, which expresses their unique vision. If you, if you, you know, if you read the ecstatic soul, this book, and you explore the, the various connections between NI and FE in particular, and this idea that uh, vision is really prescience and ability to kind of um, sense things uh, rather than an ability to predict things and that the working out of how these things are apprehended to make them more clear go, operates through a kind of collaboration with other subjects, other human beings. Well, you know, this is something that can be really done in a lecture hall or in a classroom, for example, that's a useful venue. So. Teacher might sound like it's and is a difficult job, can be a quite difficult job, but I think an INFJ uh, could really thrive. And in the management world, again, there's temporal constraints, there's target constraints, performance constraints. You kind of have someone looking over your shoulder. You can end up being micromanaged. That happens quite a lot. All sources of, of dissatisfaction. Um, and yet the reality is that there's going to be a lot of us who work in these management-dominated workplaces because they're so numerous and some of them are going to struggle and so in which in this case it's not so much i can't just come to you and say well just leave your job and become a teacher or become a become an academic or become a researcher because you know like first of all these jobs are preciously difficult to 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 to, to catch and some of them require phds not everybody has phds and sometimes, you know, you have a family to feed or you just have to feed yourself. You can't just say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll quit my job and start studying it again so I can become a psychologist because obviously psychologist is another uh, really good avenue for INFJs. Now, the thing about psychologists that I think is important to keep in mind is that you can't just say, oh, uh, I love to be a psychologist, so I'm going to do be a psychologist because it would satisfy me intellectually and emotionally. It might. But always keep in mind that psychologists really has to, take, to, to, to have as a priority their patients, not themselves. And that if you feel like you have psycholo psychological fragility or instability, um, Jung speaks about that a lot in his writings. You know, that is very important that you're aware of what these are, that you work on these. And obviously every psychologist has a psychologist. But so it's not a straightforward avenue either. Now, when it comes to nine to five in organizations, in companies, um, there's going to be a lot of us that, and again, that includes me. So I, you know, I know where this is coming from. Um, we have to sort of make do with what we have and try to be our best selves in what we have. Uh, when I say our best selves, I mean our best performing selves, but also our happiest selves. And obviously, there's a connection between the two. You're never more likely to be um, a high performing employee as when you are content, when you are satisfied, when you feel valued. And that's where it gets tricky because, again, the, the management-oriented organizational environment doesn't always teach you how to be that. It is more likely to be natural, a natural sort of progression for extroverted types, particularly for extroverted types with highly developed T functions, like the TE function is going to be useful, the SI function is going to be useful. Now, INFJs don't have that function. And in fact, their FE might not even be that strong. So how do they manage if they're mostly like an NI kind of heavy INFJ 
and maybe or maybe like an ni and sort of strong ti and the fe is you know, something that you need to work on well first of all read the exotic flow because that will give you some clues as to what you can do in this regard in ter terms of self-work but there's also other ways it's it's about i think um knowing that even within a workplace where you have a nine to five and it's a desk job there are different profiles that they might not be presented exactly in this way because you know it's not intuitive necessarily for managers themselves but there are different profiles of managers and officers and so on it's a, a workplace would not work if everybody was super extroverted and always coming up with like new ideas and brainstorming if everyone was like that you know that wouldn't work if everybody was an executive style person just takes decisions loves to kind of have deadlines and deliver on these wouldn't work there's a need for a lot of different types of profile and i think that when it comes to the infj there's actually a fit with a particular kind of profile within that particular kind of world now that profile um in order to kind of drill down into what i mean here i would like to make use of a particular uh, framework or a particular personality type system that specifically belongs to the workplace and you would be surprised to hear, but actually this was uh, imparted to me or shared with me by my father, who is, who is now retired, but he, in fact, he's an ENFJ himself, but he has he, ha he was a manager and a director of men and women uh, all his life and uh, a very, very FE oriented. And he, he, he had this, this personality system, it's a little bit simpler than MBTI, but it would be really interesting to look at the intersections between that system and MBTI, particularly the INFJ personality, perhaps other introverted personalities as well, because I think that I can really give you a very, very useful and, and productive toolkit for knowing how to get by. Now, the thing is, this video has already run to 12 minutes and I'm trying to keep it a little bit briefer uh, these days. Um, uh, so you, I'm just inviting you, if you're interested in hearing more about this kind of crisscrossing of the MBTI framework, the makeup and then this other personality system belonging to the workplace where we'll see the overlapping with INFJs and how that can lead to good thriving in the, in the workplace. Well then, you know, um, tune in for the video tomorrow uh, at uh, 3 p.m. Irish time um, and various other times. You know, you're you're probably familiar at this point with the, with the timing of the Sunday video. So uh, stay, stay in touch. Um, and stay tuned because uh, I'll be I'll be exploring this topic in a bit more detail. All right, see you tomorrow guys. Take care.